The Gnostics. Gnosticism, like the ancient mysteries, was founded on spiritism, their mediums giving instructions purporting to come from the gods or spirits. In the Christian era, one of the earliest prominent Gnostics was Simon Magus, a Jew and an adept of the sect of Docithians. This article is composed of certain passages transcribed verbatim from the Moravians compared and detected by Lavington. See pages 13, 59, 105 to 109 and 133. Among the successive disciples of Simon Magus were Basilides, Valentinius, Carpocrates, Marcus, Martian, Cerdo, Epiphanes, Mondanus, etc., and according to Bishop Lavington, these were heretics, and, that they were heretics of the worst kind that ever defiled and disgraced the Christian name, is allowed by all denominations of Christians. Some of these lived in the first century and even in the Apostles' days, but the second century was most fruitful in the production of this generation of vipers and we must receive our knowledge of their abominable tenets from theodorly ecclesiastical writers such as Irenaeus, Epiphanius, Theodoret, and many others. The spirit among these heretics went by different names, Ogdoas, Sophia, Terra, Jerusalem and Lord in the masculine gender is particularly called both Prunicus and Prunica, Mother Prunica the Bold, and Mother Achameth, their mother is a woman from a woman. Sometimes their celestial beings are neither male nor female, sometimes interchangeably either male or female. Such was the excellency of their knowledge and illumination, who arrogantly styled themselves Gnostics, that they are superior to Peter or Paul or any of Christ's other disciples. They only, have drunk up the supreme knowledge, are above principalities and powers, secure of salvation, and for that very reason are free to debauch women, or indulge all manner of licentiousness, this knowledge is of itself perfect redemption, and sufficient. Simon Magus, who taught that his harlot Helena was the Holy Ghost, instituted certain foul and infamous mysteries inexpressibly filthy and had assemblies equally filthy to celebrate them, these being the mysteries of life, and of the most perfect knowledge the Carpocratians, practiced all manner of filters and enchantments, in order, as they speak, to have full power in all things, and to do whatever they please. Hence they spend their time in luxury and pleasure and bodily enjoyments, nor ever come among us, unless it be to ensnare unstable souls, and entice them into their impious doctrine. For this end they taught incontinence to be obligatory, asa law, and not only lawful, but necessary to salvation not only compatible with the Saviour's religion, but an essential part of it, and those were, the best men, who in the common opinion were the most vicious. The Carpocratians grew to that degree of madness, that being unable to conceal their debaucheries, they made incontinence to be a law, Prodicus added this to the tenets of Carpocrates, that fornication ought to be open and public, and the use of women common. For which reason, in their feasts, the candles were extinguished, each lay with the women, as chance appointed, and they called this lasciviousness a mystical initiation, a mystical communion. Clemens Alex, gives a long passage from the writings of Epiphanes, contending for a community of women, as being the law of heaven, and that men and women ought no more to be confined in their amours than other animals. For Comus says Epiphanes, he hath implanted a strong and vehement desire in man of propagating his species, which neither law, nor custom, nor anything else, can abolish, fridged is the decree of God. The Ephites, or Cainites, say, that Cain was the progeny of a higher principality than Abel, and they confess that Esau, Korah, and the Sodomites, and all such, were their relations, that Volva was the creator of the universe, and that Nanaku will be saved, unless he passed through all. So also Carpocrates taught. Most of the Gnostics, with wonderful artifice of improbity, taught what is not fit to be named, in the promiscuous use of women, and to roll in all manner of filthy communication. The banquet being over, says the man to the woman, arise, and show thy love to a brother. So they proceed to copulation, some of them, by a most horrible abuse of scripture, apply the words, give to everyone that asketh thee, towards enticing the women. Take hold, says Isidorus, of some robust woman, that you be not plucked away from grace, and when you have spent your seminal fire, you may pray with a good conscience. 
both Epiphanius, and Irenaeus before him, say of the founder of the Nicolaitans, being ashamed of his own remissness, he audaciously pronounced, that no one, who was not lascivious every day could be partaker of eternal life, therefore those Gnostics, after a debauchery, were used to boast of their happiness, as having done a meritorious thing, and when they had their all on a complying female, they told her she was now a pure virgin, though she was daily corrupted, and for many years together. This may be a proper place to introduce the confession of Epiphanius, who in his youth had fallen into the Gnostic heresy, whence he received what he writes concerning them, from the professed teacher's own mouths, when their women, one in particular, used all their arts to debauch him. But by the help of the divine grace he overcame their temptations. I was then, says he, reproached by those pestilent women, who thus scoffingly talked with each other, we would have saved this youth, but not being able, we have suffered him to perish in the hands of the principalities. Forth most beautiful among them makes herself the bait, and hose whom she enticeth, she is said not to destroy, but to deliver. Whence the handsomest are used to upbraid this woe are less so, I am an elect vessel, able to save the swam I attempt, which you have not power to do. The most beautiful of them were employed to seduce me, but God delivered me from their wickedness, so that, after reading their books, I escaped from among them, and discovered the several names of them to the bishops of those parts, and near eighty of them were sent into banishment. The Valentinians, says Irenaeus, being in love with certain women, would, without a blush, seduce them from their husbands, and make them their own wives. Others of them, seemingly modest at first, pretended to live with Thema's sisters, and in process of time were discovered, sister being found pregnant by brother. And to aggravate their wickedness, they esteemed copulation as a most sacred mystery, known only to themselves, and which the profane were not allowed to put in practice, what was abominable in others being highly meritorious in themselves. For, saith Irenaeus again, they have this grace descending to them from the unspeakable and unnameable copulation above. For which reason they ought always to be meditating on the mystery of copulation. And thus they persuade silly people, addressing them in discourse, whoever is in the world and of the world, and mingleth with a woman is not of the truth, nor shall pass into the truth, because he mingleth in concupiscence. Therefore continence, say they, is necessary to us natural men, but by no means to themselves, who are spiritual and perfect, among wam the seed, small from above, is perfected here. Compare Tertullian, p. 261. To quote Clemens Alexandrinus, I will bring into open light your most secret mysteries, not ashamed to speak what I you are not ashamed to worship Pi. e. the secrets of both sexes. For I may well call them atheists, who impudently worship those parts, which modesty forbids to mention, 